Hello. Welcome to today's edition of That Tastes Amazing. What is it? This is the show where we help you expand your nutritional horizons. You know, you can eat a lot more things than you've ever dreamt of. And I'm here to show you what. Now today we're going to talk about the wonderful world of flour extenders and bread substitutes. Of course, a lot of you are already using flour substitutes. And bread doesn't have to be made of wheat flour. Ground barley, for example, is scrumptious. And why wouldn't it be? Barley is the key ingredient in beer. Ha ha ha! Now I've got your attention, haven't I? Making beer is like making tea. You pour hot water over partly sprouted barley grains. But after all this beer tea, it's called wort, by the way, after it's been poured off to ferment into beer, well, there are bags and bags full of used barley. Now, can you believe that people used to feed spent mash to cows? <laughs> what a waste! I mean, of course, it's not as yummy as it used to be, but there are still a few calories left. All you need to do is grind the used barley into flour in the kind of hand mill that you used to use for coffee beans. Now, if you've already sold your hand mill, barley can be pounded into flour with an ordinary mortar. Now, of course, that'll use and require a lot more elbow grease, hmm? Like this, but it'll really build up those muscles. Now, once you've got your barley flour, you just jolly well mix it in with wheat flour. If you can get it, that is. See, flour provides the sticky gluten that holds bread together. So the more flour you can mix in, the better. Ideally, the proportions are one cup of barley to one cup of flour. However, if you really like the taste of barley, you can always mix in two cups to one cup of flour. It'll have a more crumbly, more cake-like consistency. I love a crumble cake, don't you? But you could always eat it in a bowl with a spoon. After all, it's going to look the same when it comes out the other end, isn't it? <laughs> well, so much for used barley. Now, if you can still get your hands on a potato, potato flour is another excellent extender for your flour supplies. Very important. You must slice your potatoes as thin as possible, as if you're making crisps. In fact, if you've got oil to fry them in, you can just skip making flour and go right to making crisps. Machine oil will do just as well as fat or grease. But if bread is what you're about, then slice your potato slices until you can break them with your hand. If your oven works, you can dry them in the oven, but a fireplace is just as good. Just make sure you dry them and don't actually cook them. The key is that you don't want a lot of water in your potato flour. Just move them a little bit away from the fire. Now, I'm not actually going to slice this potato because the drying process takes several hours and, well, we haven't got all day, have we? <laughs> oh, oh yes, yes, yes. I've got plans to you later, Mr. Potato. You've got a date for the hot pot of full of boiling oil. <laughs> Some people seem to think that sawdust is a good flour extender. Well, they're certainly using their English imaginations, aren't they? We've always been good at coming up with clever solutions to just about any problem, eh? <coughs> certainly easy to get sawdust. You just saw some wood. <laughs> and yes, sawdust will indeed fill you up. It's very slow to digest, which makes for a full tummy all day long. Just Make sure it's powdery and not too rough or it'll irritate your stomach. <laughs> Do bear in mind that sawdust has surprisingly little nutritional value. Man cannot live on sawdust alone. If you're looking for a better use of sawdust, it's handy to use as a mulch in your garden. It really helps aerate your soil. And if you have a typical handling clay under your house, a bit of sawdust is just the thing to mix in to lighten up that soil. And the same goes for wheat chaff. Fills the tummy, but after a while you'll need to eat something nutritious. Best to dig it into your victory garden where it'll do your vegetables a world of good. <laughs> Listen to me, this isn't my gardening show, is it? Let's get back to flower extenders. Remember, if you're harvesting wild seeds, they won't contain any joy. And neither will potatoes, unless you've watered them yourself from water out of the tap. And especially sawdust and chaff, they don't have any joy at all. So remember... To adjust your dose accordingly. And bear in mind, if sawdust or chaff is all you have, just up your dose of joy a little. They'll fill your tummy and you won't be at all upset that you're a little bit hungry. 
You might even forget that you haven't eaten at all. But just get back to real food as soon as you can, and you'll be right as rain. Oh, I'm afraid I've come to the end of our time. This is Uncle Jack wishing you an amazing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Tune in next time when we explore what to do with meat that's gone a bit off. See you soon. <laughs>